My name is Chris, and welcome to the Camp of Dan Files. What's popping? That's what's popping. If you're tired of dealing with this particular uh, piece of equipment here, this uh, scissor jack, you can actually go ahead and do an OEM upgrade and get yourself a bottle jack like I've done. And I'll show you here in a minute what it looks like. So here we are in the back seat of my R50 Pathfinder. I'm just going to pull this up. And here, this is what I'm talking about. Now here's the uh, bottle jack. You can find these in uh, R50 Pathfinders and the QX4s, model years uh, 1996 through, I wanna say 99-ish. I've actually been looking for one of these for a while because I just pictured myself struggling with the uh, scissor jack, you know, trying to use it on this truck. You know, I have one for my car and I fear even having to bring that thing out in an emergency, let alone trying to put a truck on one of those. So I much prefer this. I mean, you have this little doodad here, you know, and that allows it to move up and down and with very little effort. And again, this is a direct bolt up. You just take the old um, assembly out and you put your used uh, old one in there in its place. And um, these particular um, items, they are heavily sorted after in the pick parts. Most times when I go to the pick part, if I see one, if I don't get it right then and then, the next time I go, it won't be there. And um, this was one of probably eight that were in the uh, pick part, and this was the very last one left. So I lucked up. Also, something you should know, when you were looking to purchase these, you want to check in this area to make sure that it's not leaking. Because uh, I have seen some in the past where they have leaked or were producing leaks in that area. So if you see jack oil or hydraulic fluid in that area, don't take it. Try and find another. But um, outside of that, you know, you could go through your cosmetic needs. This one was the cleanest one in the entire pick apart. The one that I went to. Um, there's another pick apart even closer to my house. I looked at some of those that were available there and they were really nasty. So I skipped over those and opted to get this one um, a little further away from home. But I feel like it was well worth it. Oh, it looks like I have a little bit of competition today. Somebody here with an Infinity QX4. Hopefully they're not out to the same stuff as me. But let's go in and see. So here's a 1997 R50. And on it was these 15 inch steelies. This thing's been in the yard for four days, guys. And I'm amazed nobody took them. They took the lugs off, but left all four here. So I'm going to go ahead and help myself. All right, guys. So I had to stop recording there towards the end because my camera started to overheat. But um, what do you guys think? I mean, I think it kind of transformed things for us. Now we just got to get our lift on here. And those 3110 and a half. <laughs> I mean, this thing looks this thing looks really good. Wow. My my my. Look at this ginormous box we got from Rock Auto, guys. Yeah. Here's our packing slip, guys. 
This is just a portion of the order. This is actually half of it. Let's see what we have in here. Oh yeah. So here we have our KYB replacement struts for the front end. Today is the day where we finally get everything mounted onto the truck for our lift. I'm so excited. I can't wait to see what the finished product looks like. The first thing I want to do guys is go ahead and start assembling the uh, front strut assemblies. So I'm going to go ahead and set you guys up and uh, we're going to get to working on that. Here we go. So here we have it guys. The uh, strut assembly is fully assembled with the strut bearing, uh, strut mount, and uh, coil springs. These would net us approximately one and a half inches in the front. I'm going to go ahead and get these on the truck. I do believe we have just enough daylight left. So I'm going to go ahead and push through and get these loaded on the front. So here we have our strut assembly side by side. You see the subtle differences. Here's the finished product for the driver's side, guys. Everything's nice and buttoned up here on the driver's side. I feel really good. Really good about things. All right, so we got my R50 nosed in here in my driveway. I'm using a natural pitch of the driveway to try and aid me and have enough room to drop the uh, rear differential. It gets pretty, pretty low to the ground, so I'm confident I should be able to clear these coil springs. At least that's what I'm hoping. Yeah, that's a substantial amount of droop. So that's full droop with the uh, pan hard. Let's see how this goes. Well, the full droop, the driver's side coil doesn't appear to be an issue. Looks like we should be able to get this on pretty easily. Um, based on all the visual research I've done on YouTube and everywhere else, the passenger side is gonna be the trickiest because it only droops but so far. But I mean, putting my foot on here, maybe to get some additional clearance. So I'm hoping I could slip things on here. If I can, then I'm home free. If not, <laughs> whoo. Yeah, I'm gonna have to break into my inner Christmas story, dad, and um, make up my own curse words. Let's see what we got. So you're gonna notice that when you have the uh, suspension at full droop, that the driver's side coil spring can just be easily had, like you see right here. The passenger side, however, a different story. So I was getting a little bit frustrated, but then I had to remind myself that I have a spring compression tool. So we just switched to the appropriate compression rings and we're gonna loosen this guy up and send him home. And see on this side, it just slides right in. Just the guys that I've been waiting for. So we just got our UPS uh, delivery. Can you guess what's in this box? All right guys, it's 10.07 a.m. the next morning. Our lift was completed uh, late yesterday afternoon around five. But yeah guys, I think it came out pretty good. You know what you think in the comments.
Yeah, this counter, I hooked it up, guys. So, got my new Falcon Wild Peaks, and they gave me some chrome valve stem covers. And some new valve stems. I don't know, I really don't see a rake on this truck. I could be wrong, but I really don't see one. I'll let you guys be the judge. You see a rake here? I mean, it looks pretty level to me. I'm really, really, really happy with the way this turned out. Hey, look, it's another R50. And I'm in my R50. <laughs> We have a set of mile markers, part number 435. These are pretty common and um, heavily used in the R50 community. Uh, these parts were sourced with proceeds from our uh, junkyard parts flipping deals. Matter of fact, everything that we're putting on my R50 right now, those proceeds came directly from me going to the junkyard. Um, that's another thing that I wanted to mention to you guys. Um, years ago, <laughs> people used to make recommendations to me for cheap ways to repair my previous vehicles by going to the junkyard and I would always shoot it down. I was like, there's no way I'm putting the used junkyard part on my car. Ill. But that was a young person not really understanding the value of a dollar and just couldn't get past the fact that it was a junkyard. But I know better now. <laughs> so and again, you guys seen those 15 inch steelies that I scored that's now sitting on my R50? I sourced them in the junkyard. I mean, come on. So. Ooh. These are nice. I think these would complement our wheels and new tires really well. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Long story short, I gave myself a two-day deadline to get it done. I thought for sure it was a slam dunk. I was going to get it done in one day. It was a lot of work. It was really hard and grueling and excruciating because I did a lot of groundwork. And when I say this, I'm not saying this figuratively either. I literally worked on the ground here in this space that you see where these boxes are. You know, I was on my hands and knees over here. So understand if you don't have, you know, like a dedicated workbench or a vice or anything like that, you can still get it done with the right tools but you're gonna be you're gonna be praying like Scotty Kilmer likes to say. Except you're not praying that you can fix something or something works out. You're gonna be praying that it'll be over soon <laughs> because you're gonna be down there for a while. My initial plan of attack was to do the rear first. That went out the window because something instinctively told me to just go after the front end because I knew that's where the bulk of the work was gonna be. So I was like, you know what? It's day one. Let's get after it, right? So here's the uh, R50 that we were interested in. This is a 1997 vintage. And um, <laughs> I happen to know this rig. So the previous owner was actually trying to sell this thing for $1,000. I don't know what was wrong with it. I guess it wasn't running. They said they bought it as a project vehicle. 
They have some other parts in here. But there's only um, a few things that I'm really interested in off of this vehicle. And all four of them are here. <laughs> so you, <laughs> you know what time it is. Let me see before I claim my prize here. Size of these. Oh, 31 10 and a half R15s. Perfect. Yes. Here's a 1996 R50 Pathfinder two wheel peel. From this, I'm going to take all four of its wheel center caps. Only need two, but I'm taking all four. Yeah. So initially, I was planning on taking all four of these wheels. Like I said, I know this R50 well. It was just recently on Facebook Marketplace like three weeks ago. And when I seen it in the staging portion of the yard or the staging section of the yard, I was quite surprised. When I seen it, I'd, I seen the wheels, I just knew right away it was the same R50. So I think what I'm gonna do, because the, the back two wheels, they're on the ground, pretty much this one, not all the way, but the driver's side one, yeah, the weight of the vehicle is on that. So that could get kind of sketchy. But realistically, I only needed one of these wheels. I don't think anyone's going to be interested in just the three. So I'm just going to take this one. So I'm going to use it for a spare. It holds air. Yeah, this tire is very old, so we will be replacing this with a newer used tire because it's going to be a spare i'm not investing hundreds of dollars in a tire that's probably never going to get used maybe but once in a blue moon so i'm going to get this guy but in the meantime i'll now have four se oem wheel center caps um, like I said, I only needed two. This is mainly for the back wheels, just to clean things up, make it look more uniform. Um, I think my plan for these is to take them home, clean them up, and paint them. Paint them black and put a maybe a little coat of a uh, clear coat on there. Just to make it look, look a little bit nicer. Yeah, guys, it gets even better with this uh, 2003 SE trim. This luggage rack, man, I actually have a luggage rack project that I've been working on, but I think I'd much rather utilize this one. I mean, it's ready to rock. I mean, check that out. All I have to do is just clean it and slap it on my truck. I think I'm gonna go ahead and harvest this guy next. So here we have our catch all loaded up and now, Homeward bound. I have adjusted these in the past because when I first got my R50, they were not orientated in the fashion that I wanted. They were like smushed together pretty much. So I did move them as far apart as possible, front and back. I mean, nothing wrong with this luggage rack. A lot of people in the R50 community, they tend to keep these and use them with the uh, roof basket of their choice. But I wanna do things a little bit differently. Um, another thing that's gonna be removed is gonna be the uh, OEM uh, wind deflector here for the sunroof. That too will uh, have to be removed as well.
yeah, we have them both hitched and ready to go. I'm really uh, pleased with the 9447's uh, towing capabilities. All right, guys, so I have a confession to make. So before I confess, I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, instrument cluster. It's going to set me back about 40 bucks with uh, warranty. The reason why is because I don't have a four-wheel drive indication light. And the reason why is because the cluster that's on my R50 is actually not the original one. Um, my R50 has about 220 or 230,000 miles on it currently. Um, the reason why the cluster was swapped out is because of an illumination issue per the uh, previous owner. I never did get a chance to see the original cluster because they swapped it out. But it's supposed to look like this. And more importantly, it's supposed to have that four-wheel drive uh, light that comes on when you're engaged. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this one now. Now, I was going to go ahead and get both of these. But I just realized that I really only need one. I'm going to show you guys what's so special about these. So the cool feature is the main portion of the uh, sun visor can be flipped towards the uh, door. And then you still have this residual piece that you can flip down. So you're blocked on two sides from the sun. Now, we already went ahead and harvested the driver's side. I was going to take the passenger side too, but I don't really need it. Because I already have one. So on either side here, this is the passenger side. So right here. You're gonna need to get a plastic trim removal tool to remove this to reveal uh, the two Phillip head screws that are behind that. And then over here is one that's exposed. And the same for the driver's side. See one right there. And then you have to remove that plastic uh, cover there. So there we have it guys, all nicely installed. We still have to clean it up a little bit. But yeah, vanity mirror works. Same over here. Try not to touch it so much with my dirty hands. Yeah. And they look like they belong. I'm loving it. Yeah, I've been back here once before because even though this was a used junkyard unit this one too had a few of these bulbs that were out if you ever had to service any of these bulbs you had to take the cluster out and then you have access to everything on the back side all right so now we're going to get the replacement cluster plugged in and we're going to test it out and see where we're at so here's the cluster that was just in my r50 right See what it looks like? And then look at this one. See the difference? Go ahead and leave it in the comments. I'm not gonna tell you guys what the differences are, but if you're paying attention, I'm pretty sure you can see right away the big difference. Go ahead and leave it in the comments, guys, if you know what the differences are between these two. Aside from, you know, the obvious stated differences. Bam. So we pretty much had to change every single bulb except the one that illuminates the trip meter. Let me put my keys in here. This way you guys can see that everything works. High beam. Cruise control four-wheel drive that's the main reason why we changed the cluster guys we didn't have this particular uh, feature in the cluster that's been in here and uh this cluster is reading around 212,136 miles so not bad this is actually closer to what I actually have on the physical truck from what I can tell, it looks like our fuel gauge readout is working correctly too, because 
I have just about a half a tank of gas. So yeah, guys, I would say that this bit of work has been very successful. We have a viewer that asked about my exhaust here. Let me see if I can get in here and give you guys a shot. So yeah, you can see it there. It's not a hole, it's complete and utter separation. And the muffler itself, it's starting to cavitate. Let me see if I can show you guys that. Yeah, you guys see that? Yeah, that's what I'm dealing with. But, all right guys, it's junkyard day. Here we have a 2001 uh, Infiniti QX4. And today we're gonna be taking a few things from this truck. I'm gonna take this uh, muffler. I really wanted the exhaust tip first, but I'm gonna need the muffler too because the one that's on my R50 is completely shot and it needs replacing. So I didn't quite get everything that I wanted to that was on my list today, but the uh, muffler that you see here was the most important item. This is gonna silence things on my truck quite a bit, I think. Man, my truck is so much quieter now. You can't even hear it. <laughs> wow. I'm really impressed, guys. I think they did a stellar job on this thing. You can't even hear it. I'm so stoked now to go and try and get this thing to pass smog. We have no check engine light. So needless to say, guys, we passed smog. So I'm good again for a whole nother year. I'm excited, baby. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Hey, crazy. See this Pathfinder? <laughs> This thing is literally gonna take up the whole luggage rack. Yeah guys, so I think this looks really good. I mean, I'm getting blasted here. This is plenty, plenty of light. All right guys, it looks good. No damage, so I'm going to go ahead and get it mounted on the truck. Hello there, Channel 19. This is Camper Dan. Just bought a new Cobra 19, trying to verify that I'm transmitting. Can I get a radio check? Thank you, sir. I am currently transmitting from Henderson, Nevada. All right, yeah, it's definitely working, man. Um, I'm over here on the east side of Las Vegas, Henderson. Sounds really good. Awesome. Thank you, sir, for verifying that for me. Uh, you gentlemen, enjoy the rest of your evening. Bring your kayaks, get your kayaks ready. <laughs> Just look at the Jeep in front of me. And the Jeep is taller than I am. And just in case you were wondering, here's the uh, mounting brackets that I used. Again, this is from uh, Anderson Design and Fabrications. I found out about this particular uh, mounting hardware through um, another YouTuber. And um, I'm glad I found that video because I was busting my brain on how I was going to mount this thing. But this works great. 
So our awning is uh, currently getting tested here. I don't know if you guys can see that. It is raining slightly. I'm gonna call this a sun shower. So another thing guys, when the rain starts pooling up on this thing, just tip one side down or both and it will allow the water to run off like you see here. Last but not least, thanks to all of the response that I got from you guys the other day when I posted that short about finding this key fob in the uh, junkyard, I was able to set the uh, notification flasher and um, honk feature for my R50. So, really excited about that. And, um, now I don't have to worry about my wife and kids or other members of my family possibly breaking one of my door handles because um, in the past I always had issues with them trying to yank on the door handles before I can actually get the key into the door to unlock things. Now I don't have to worry about that. So thank you guys again. Or like my dad would often say, Peaches. Thanks again for stopping by the Camper Dan Files. My name is Chris. If you've enjoyed today's video, go ahead and give it a like. And while you're at it, don't forget to share, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, keep using your Pathfinder as a Pathfinder, on or off the pavement.